Kubernetes is a system to automate the deployment and management of your containerized applications. Using Kubernetes, you can deploy your application into a cluster and Kubernetes will manage the life cycle of your application for you. That's fantastic. However, comes a challenge, you have to tell Kubernetes how it's going to deal with your application once you've deployed it into the system. And there are so many options. Do you have an HPA? Do you have a VPA? Do you have a service mesh that's allowing you to route traffic into it? Do you have a port that's open? Is it consuming data from a queue? There's so many ways to configure your application and Kubernetes works with all those scenarios, which is fantastic. But most applications are fairly standard these days. They're web-based applications have an API and they need to receive web traffic. And so there's a common pattern there and enter Knative. Knative will bring all the common patterns that are the most prevalent when you're deploying your Kubernetes infrastructure. The great part is that when you put your app into the Knative format, you'll be able to take advantage of the streamlined capabilities. Far less maintenance, far less dealing with the general deployment pattern because it's got a uh, kind of one size fits all. I like this a lot because when we have today, or for example at PubNub, we have decoupled systems that require you to interact with, put, put new code in, new instructions over here in different repositories. They're all decoupled systems for deploying your application into a Kubernetes cluster because it's you know open season. And that means there's all this extra workload and maintenance a lot of extra effort that you have to do in order to get your application to deploy. With Knative, it's just all these opinionated ideas that are baked in for the most common patterns, which is really great because now all your teams can have this unified framework that makes it really seamless and they have less work to do and it's really simple. It's like a developer happiness thing. So let's walk through really quick what are some of the advantages of Knative and what we have that's at our fingertips. Things that we get as a bonus using Knative on top of Kubernetes. Now, just, just for an idea, you know that you still need Kubernetes. It is the infrastructure that manages the coordination of nodes and your application. Knative just sits on top to sort of take care of all those common patterns and make it a lot easier for you as you deploy your applications. So Knative was created originally by Google, which was also, but Kubernetes was also created by Google and contributors. One of the common challenges with Kubernetes in general is that it was, you know, rather complex. There's a high barrier to entry into understanding how your application can deploy with all these various requirements in the infrastructure. And with Knative, we'll be able to deploy and build our components that run our applications on Kubernetes really seamlessly. There's extra bonuses like scale to zero. So if your application might have, uh, it might might need to go to sleep because it doesn't need to be there. It doesn't need to be running. So it can be turned off essentially and then woken up when needed uh, upon request. Another bonus is auto scaling with horizontal pod auto scaling pre-built for you. You don't have to worry about those YAML files in cluster build. So your CI system will be able to, like essentially it's a baked in all in one thing, which is great. Now you don't need to have separate build systems, separate deploy systems. It's all there for you. There's also an eventing frame framework, which is fantastic, which means that now you can plug in different event buses into your cluster and have your applications pull from those. And it's a really simple way for creating subscription patterns against those topics and queues. This is something that we face as a challenge today. In Pubna, we often run into scenarios where we have all this boilerplate that we need to deal with when we're deploying into our infrastructure. And the best part about Knative is it's developer friendly, right? That developer happiness. We, we want to make it much a better experience being able to deploy your applications. Really, you just want to write code? I just want to write code and then click the go button and it popped off to the, it just goes, it's, it's live. It's active. I don't want to deal with all the extra maintenance and uptime and scaling and, and ops. I want it to be automatic. I just want to write some code. Boom. Off. It's deployed. Installing Knative into your existing Kubernetes cluster is fairly seamless. You just have to execute a few kubectl commands to get that up and running. Before you do, though, you want to make sure that you have all your CLI installed. And if you're running on a Mac, it's fairly easy. You just do brew install and a few items here. This list, I'm going to zoom in so it's a little bit more clear what we're looking at here. 
Let's do a quick little zoom in. And you can see it's just a few brew install commands. Once you have that, now it's gonna be a lot easier for you to uh, manage your Kubernetes cluster. You probably already have kubectl installed. Uh, and then you also want to install the Knative CLI, which is going to be, it's still gonna be running kubectl behind the scenes, but it's gonna be doing a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Before you can use Knative CLI directly, you'll have to still use kubectl to install Knative into your existing cluster. You will target some specific YAML files that will install Knative into your cluster. I ran into a specific problem. Various versions of Kubernetes clusters exist, and the latest version, you'll be able to install the latest Knative. However, it's very likely if you're already running Kubernetes, you'll have to target an older version. If you don't, what's very interesting, it will allow you to install the new version, but it will just fail. It'll constantly fail into a crash back off loop, and then it will give you the option to specify an override to allow you to install the newer version in an older Kubernetes cluster, but you'll have to do that through an environmental variable. And you know, who knows what that's gonna do? You might as well take advantage of the exact version that is known to work in your cluster. This is something that we had to do. You just have to make sure to target the right version for your cluster. Once you have the right version selected, you'll be able to copy and paste essentially these series of commands and Knative serving will be installed into your Kubernetes cluster. To validate that it's installed, it's very simple. You just wanna make sure to run the Knative serving pods, get all the pods in that namespace. And what we can do is we'll run that here for you really quick. All right, I'm gonna run this command here. Uh, as you can see, it's gonna just do a quick little uh, check to see what the inventory of pods running. As you can see, it's got all the Knative things installed. I ran into a, a few errors with the d domain installation just to get some of the DNS working. You don't have to worry about that. Even though it says error, it's a one-time type deal, so it's completed, it doesn't need to keep running. We're good to go. Everything's set up in the right fashion here. Now that we've installed Knative into our cluster and have all the CLIs installed locally on our system, we'll be able to fully leverage the capabilities of Knative. Now that we have Knative deployed in our Kubernetes cluster, we can take it a step further and use something called Knative functions, which I really like because it goes all the way. How far can you go to where you have only to write code and have an experience where you just say deploy? Knative functions is that exact experience. I don't wanna have to deal with YAML files or any configurations or workflows or build systems. I just wanna write code and have it deploy easily and seamlessly into my cluster. Knative functions is exactly that. So it, we have a, a func CLI command that allows us to do this. We simply start by creating a, a function and we will call it this. Let's try it out. We're gonna create a new function using node or JavaScript and we're gonna call it my function. All right, now that I have a function that was created for me, all we have to do is start putting in our application logic. We can just really quickly open up the main file and we can see here that it's going to be a basic echo server. We're gonna see if the content of the payload is a post body, it's just gonna echo out the post body upon request. If it's a get request, it's gonna echo all the query parameters. This is a nice boilerplate just to so give you a, a try of the function system in Knative. Before I deploy my function, I wanna run it locally and it shows here that I can just simply type f, uh, func run and we'll try this really quick, function run. It's gonna, it's gonna do something, uh, what, what's it gonna do? Oh, it's gonna ask me, oh, okay. So I need to set a Docker registry. All right, I set a Docker registry and now it's gonna go through a build cycle and uh, probably upload that image uh, container up to Docker IO. Last time I did this, it took a little while to build. So it'll it'll say still building a few times. <laughs> Once it's there, after it's done building, uh, you should be ready to go. All right, now it's running my function locally. So all I have to do is uh, execute uh, an API call port 8080. Let's give that a try. All right, here we go. Let's, uh, open up that. Okay, we got all of our query parameters. Uh, I see. So it gave me basically just uh, in essentially an echo, an output of whatever my, so probably if I say hello equals world, I should see hello, ah, uh, yeah, okay, perfect. So the code is running, it's uh, locally running on my system and I do have, I obviously you need to have Docker installed. So that is a thing that needs to happen. And then you're, you've tested locally. So now you're ready to deploy to production. Well, maybe not production immediately, you might have and uh, integrations or our test cluster. We'll start with that first. Okay, so I ran the function deploy and I also specified the default namespace. It asked me again to supply my Docker IO uh, location for the repository, the, the image registry. Uh, 
something that I did uh, beforehand that I didn't show earlier was I did a Docker login, Docker login, and then when you run that command, you'll be able to uh, set up a secure credential to your, your registry on Docker Hub. And now that my function's deployed, everything looks good, it gave me a nice little output here saying, hey, if you want to run your function from within the cluster, there's a nice little access point that you can do this. Uh, just try that out really quick. We should run that here and I press enter and I should see, I should see a query. Oh, wait, okay, yeah, gotta do the, the security thing because it's, they go, oh, there we go, <laughs> All right, so it's now it's running my function within the Kubernetes cluster. I can say a uh, question mark, hello uh, equals uh, production. Maybe with the explanation point. Let's see if that works. Oh yeah, it should, this should work. And it did, <laughs> it worked. There we go. All right, so now my code's running within the cluster uh, using Knative. The great part was I didn't hardly have to do anything. I didn't have to write any YAML files. I didn't have to deal with Docker. I didn't have to set up any CI or any build procedures. It was all done for me, everything, a magic. I love it and it's, it, it's fantastic. This kind of experience is something that I hope that we all have when we are deploying our, our code. It is a fantastic experience because end to end, it's just a few command lines and we, we got our system, our, our code is in production. Well, in this case, it's in an integration. Uh, but it's one step before you hit that next level. So there's a few extra steps to get Kubernetes and uh, Knative with functions running up with a more production level of, of access. And you're going to want to use real DNS, a real DNS name. You'll be able to configure that uh, using Knative documentation. It'll it'll guide you through it. It's really straightforward to add a, a, your own domain, like a real domain name, right? Because this this domain here it might be hard to see on your screen, but it's just meant for uh, you know just testing it out and getting started. You wouldn't want to necessarily use that for your production system, right? You want to use your own business domain. All right, now that our functions deployed into Knative and our Kubernetes cluster, what we're going to do next is we're going to take it one step further and have pub events and actions come into play. And we're gonna leverage this convenient endpoint that was returned to us here when we set up our event and actions within PubNub. For, so step one, we need to log into our PubNub account. Now that we're in our PubNub account, we're gonna click events and actions, and we're going to select the key set that's, that we want associated with this. We need to create an event listener, so that way anytime a message comes in uh, on any channel, doesn't matter what channel it is, we, we don't want to filter here, no filters. Uh, and I will call this, you know, the message event. This is going to be messages. There we go. This will create a listener onto my account anytime a message comes in. So now that that listener is in, I need to create an action. And what this action is going to do is going to allow me to plug in a webhook so that D that DNS value here that we have, we can copy that and add a listener. Here we go, adding the listener. And then we are going to send a webhook endpoint, which will be this here and we are good to go that's all we need to do let's click save and it should be deployed here more there it goes okay as we can see here it says that we've got one action connected to our event listener and that is a webhook all right i'm going to confirm here that my function is still running and i get back data so we say question mark hello equals this this it's uh, say true true so we are really saying hello and we're really getting an echo back from the system here we go okay hello true looks good to me then we're going to go back here and we need to get all the pods. I need to get the pod that's associated with my function that's currently running. It's going to give me an interesting uh, pod ID here. What I'll be able to do is copy that and then uh, do kubectl logs in the pod name. And that printed out all the logs, but I also want to follow. So let's make sure to do a dash F for follow. And then this will give me all the uh, logs on my pod, which is fantastic. So I should be able to see if I reload this here that, yep, okay. So now my logs are showing up as desired. Okay, now I have everything set up. So I'm going to open up the debug console here so I can send a few messages. Okay, now I've got my debug console open. I'm going to send a message here and that should show up on my log output. And as we can see here, we see the URL and my host looks like it's looking good. So what I did was I deployed uh, my function into Knative functions over my Kubernetes cluster. I set up an event in action and then I sent a message using the debug console in the PubNub admin console here. And that sent a message to the PubNub global network, which triggered an event uh, on a listener and that piped over to an attached action and then it triggered my function. And that's uh, a full end-to-end -end setup.